Imagine you spent hundreds of hours studying, sacrificed so much time where you could have been working and earning money, and putting in so much effort just to find out that you had failed your first actuarial exam, feeling defeated, angry, like you had just wasted so much valuable time, and worst of all, you have to do it all over again. Well, that was me. About 10 years ago now, I failed my first actuarial exam, exam P. And I didn't fail it just once, I actually failed it twice, only to pass it on the third attempt. But now through refined and tested study strategies, I've been able to help tons, over a hundred future actuaries directly in passing their first actuarial exam. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the cramming nightmare that I ran into. I'll share the poor approach to practice problems that I took and also the big time waster that I encountered, plus what I should have done instead. These are the things I share with my clients so I know they work, and hopefully these things can help you pass your exam too. Okay, so as exam day got closer, I started to get more and more panicked. I was feeling stressed because I just wasn't feeling ready. I specifically remember a time laying on the floor studying because that's just where I studied, on the floor. And I was doing practice problems and getting so many of them wrong. And I was really starting to feel defeated before I had even taken the exam. We were only a couple weeks away and I was feeling like I wasn't going to pass. And with that mentality, it's tough to move forward. But why did that happen? Well, basically because I didn't have a plan. No plan at all. I knew when I was going to start studying and I knew when I was going to take the exam. But everything about the process of going from just starting to being fully prepared was completely mush. Think about it. Would you ever go on vacation that way, knowing where you want to go and when you want to get there, but making absolutely no plans for anything else, not knowing what you're going to do when you get there, not making any flight arrangements or hotel stays? That's kind of what I was doing when I <laughs> took my studying approach this way. Does every future actuary get excited to go on a vacation where they'll have hours and hours of free time to catch up on studying? No? Just me? Okay. <laughs> you probably wouldn't do that, but that's pretty much what I was doing when I decided to start studying this way. And it doesn't work. Okay, so here's a super simple way to create a study strategy plan for yourself. First, you're going to decide when you want to start and when you're going to end, and then count how many weeks are in that time period. Now you're going to take that number of weeks and break it down into three equal chunks of time. This could be three weeks each, it could be two months each, it doesn't matter, just break it down for yourself. This gives you the total amount of time that you can spend on each phase of studying. Now there are three phases, the learn phase, the do phase, and the simulate phase. By the way, I did the practice problems in the do phase all wrong, so I'm going to give you some advice on that coming up. Once you know how much time you have to dedicate to each section, then you're going to break it down into days. You're going to give yourself one break day each week. Usually it's a Sunday, but it can be whatever day works best for you. Then divide up what you need to do into daily tasks. And this way you actually know if you're on track to reach your goal or not. You know how much studying you actually have to do each day. So in the learn phase, you're going to go through all your study materials. So break that down into daily chunks. In the do phase, I recommend doing 700 or more practice problems in order to really understand how to approach different problems and different topics, the way that they could be asked and all the sorts of stuff that you might encounter on the exam. 700 practice problems. Now, if you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, we recently added, by the time this video goes up, a 7x7 seven seven challenge where you can try to do 700 questions in 7 weeks. So keep your eyes out for that. And then in the simulate phase, you're going to aim to do at least 10 practice exams. You always want to be doing tons of review after each exam as well. Now, this might seem like a very simple, straightforward plan, but Almost no one actually does this because it takes extra time at the beginning of studying and most people just want to go straight into studying. However, it will benefit you significantly if you just take the time to do it. Now, I'm also going to put a sample 12 week study plan right down below in the description of this video so you can check it out and just see how I've come up with a 12 week plan for you. So I mentioned practice problems and how I really took a, a bad approach to doing them. Well, when I was doing these practice problems, I would just sit there and do one problem after the next, after the next, after the next, never really taking the time to create a feedback loop for myself where I would realize, okay, 
I tend to have difficulty with this type of problem, so maybe I should do more of those types of problems or questions on those topics. That's not what I did. I just kept doing more. I thought that the more problems I did, the better, which is true in a way. That's why I created the 7x7 seven seven challenge. But I shouldn't have been doing more and more problems just to see how many I could get right. So what would I do differently next time? Well, I'd realize that the practice problems I was getting wrong are actually gold. These are the ones that tell you where your weaker areas are, the areas that you need to improve on in order to improve your test score. Think of it kind of like a hockey team. Now this might be an odd analogy. Uh, do I really have to admit that I'm a Leafs fan again? I already did it once, I shouldn't have to do it again. If you really want an explanation, go watch last week's video. But I love hockey, so let's go with it. Think of a hockey team that has a 40% win percentage. So they win 40% of their game. Now they could just replace their goalie and defenseman and their forwards with a different goalie and different defenseman and different forward. But that's not really guaranteed to actually increase the winning percentage of the team. They're just bringing more and more people in, taking other people out. It's not necessarily going to help them. However, if the defenseman improves their game by 10% and the goalie improves their game by 10% then maybe the team starts to get a 55% win percentage and then maybe the forward improve their game by 10% too and the team starts seeing a 60% win percentage you see if each individual team member improves their game then the team's win percentage as a whole improves and that's very similar to what happens on your exam if you improve on certain weaker areas you're gradually going to see your test scores improve as well by the way if you have found this video helpful so far could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know and also so that other future actuaries like you can find this channel as well thank you thank you thank you now let's see if you can relate to this I did not have endless hours to study for my exams. I was babysitting, I was in school, I had a boyfriend, I was also trying to eat healthy and exercise regularly, I played a lot of soccer, so there was a limited amount of time for me to actually study. But here's the trap that I fell into and it's something that you might be doing too. I would sometimes spend 20 to 30 minutes just doing one sample problem. Okay, sometimes I did have my eyes closed and I was making a snoring sound, but I was still thinking about the problems, just subconsciously. Really, I was. I'd sit there, often staring at a blank page, trying to figure out exactly what approach I should take, trying different ways, only to find that every approach I was taking was not giving me one of those multiple choice answers that were on the page. So I knew I was doing something wrong. However, I knew I could do it, I love a good challenge, and when that happens, it is so hard for me to just stop and give up and look at the solution, but that's what I should have done. Why? Well, the limited amount of time I had just does not allow me to spend 20 to 30 minutes on one practice problem. So what I should have done instead, and what I would do if I had to study for this exam again, is to max out at two to three minutes on trying to solve a problem and feeling stuck. If I am sitting there stuck for more than two minutes, I am going to look at the solution and get a hint and then try to solve the practice problem myself using what I already know and the hint that I had. I'd also really make sure that I understood why the solution was solved that way so that I could do this again myself if a different similar question comes up in the future. Now this would have helped so much because it means that I would have been able to do more practice problems. I already mentioned doing the 7x7 seven seven challenge, answering 700 practice problems in your last 7 weeks, or even 8 weeks, 9 weeks, whatever it may be. You need to do lots of problems so that you can find your weaker areas. And since I was spending so much time just being stuck, I wasn't really learning a whole lot during that time like I could have been if instead I was doing review on a difficult topic or I was trying to find more practice problems that caused me difficulty. I do think it would be the ideal situation to be able to spend time going through different approaches and seeing what actually ends up working and figuring out why, but for most of us we just don't have that kind of time so it's not going to be a better use of time than the other things that we could be doing instead. You've got to take the shortcut. Now you know three of the things that I did wrong while I was studying for my actuarial exams, but there's actually one thing I did that I didn't even realize how valuable it was until much later on. 
This is called the interleaving approach for doing practice problems. This is the highly recommended and best way to study for an actuarial exam because they are math based and they are exams that you study for over a long period of time. It's not something you're going to spend a week on. It's something where you need to retain a lot of knowledge over a long period of time. So in this video right here, I actually explain the difference between the interleaving approach and the more typical approach that future actuaries take, the blocking approach, and why you should actually switch over to the interleaving approach. So in the description, I will link to that video. Go watch it next because not only does it explain the difference between the interleaving and the blocking approach, but you're going to get tons of other advice and unique insight into studying for your first actuarial exam. Go watch it next.